everyone, thank you again for tuning in to the We Heart Therapy channel on YouTube. You're watching the special series EFT Talk where we're talking about all things emotionally focused therapy. Today we have Dr. Rebecca Jorgensen. She's one of our big trainers from the San Diego area and with Tri EFT. And we're gonna talk today about assessment in EFT. Thank you again so much for joining us today. Sure. And so tell everyone a little bit about assessment in EFT and, and perhaps how it might be different than other models of counseling and why it's important to not rush through this very important step. Well, assessment is, a, is critical in any therapy really, but in, when you're working with a couple, you're, there's a lot of moving parts that you're assessing. And so what uh, the recommendation is for the assessment is to do a, f a session with the couple together and then do an individual session with each partner and then bring them back together and complete the assessment and then start the assessment of the relational dynamic. Mm -hmm. So in EFT we're doing the assessment, what, what are they coming in for, what's the problem, um, and then we're understanding where they've mm -hmm. come from, about, we're assessing for um, the big problems as well as the strengths that they bring to the relationship that the relationship has mm -hmm. and each of them individually. Mm -hmm. And then we can start kind of doing a cycle assessment. So it's, I think one of the things that's really important is that we don't get ahead of ourselves and start diving in trying to figure out what's going on with the relationship right. negative pattern, which we emphasize a lot, before we actually do an assessment for mm -hmm fit for therapy, mm -hmm. fit with us as the therapist, and really the assessment sets the whole foundation of um, knowing who they are, where they came from, and it will help us organize when we start trying to assess their relational dynamic. So it sounds like part of the assessment really sets the tone of EFT, of our work with the couple for slowing it down, and part of that is not rushing through the assessment process, right? And and I know Sue had set up, you know, with the couples and the individuals, why is it important to not skip the individual sessions and what are we asking the individuals in those sessions? What do we want to get from them in that assessment? Well, some really important things happen in the individual sessions when you're meeting with them. You can do a more detailed and complex attachment history. You can, um, you're still listening for the relational dynamic. It really builds your alliance with them they start to feel seen, um, not just in uh, the relational dynamic, but that you can see and know something about them as an individual. So when you go back into the couple therapy, they know you have a more full picture of them, and it really helps, my experience is it really helps to not have the content mm -hmm. be such a big issue, because they, they don't have to fight bringing in content to try to get you to know this story or that story or where they came from because you spent some time assessing and with them, with their background, with their story, with how they've seen it. And then when you move into the relational dynamic, uh, they know you have a more full and complete picture of them. It's much easier to get to the process work after you've done a really good assessment. That's really important. So, you know, oftentimes couples will come into their office and they just want to dump out their laundry list of everything that's been going on. Yeah. And by really taking your time and, okay, we're going to get a sort of a general landscape of where you guys have been, then we're going to meet with you individually and find a little bit more deeply about you guys, your story, what's important to you, who did you turn to, who are your attachment figures, how did you soothe or cope. And what you're saying is that when we do that process, you notice that the fight for content starts to dissipate when we come back together as couples, which is so important to our work. Yeah, they know, you have a better, your alliance is stronger because you've spent more time with them. Mm -hmm. Both um, the first session where you're getting them as a couple mm -hmm. and in each individual session. And you may need to spend the next session completing the assessment too before you can really go to the cycle mm -hmm. assessment but they have a sense that um, you know them better mm -hmm. and you've had a chance to really build an alliance with them, which helps the safety in the room. Mm -hmm. And the more safe they feel, the easier it is for them to kind of st start mm -hmm. to step back, mm -hmm. see the relational dynamic, let you manage the session, mm -hmm. kind of like let's go here or 
start that kind of lead, follow, flow mm -hmm. that we um, are trying to achieve in EFT. Mm -hmm. And that alliance, get that foundational mm -hmm. alliance is really built. So the task mm -hmm. aspect we know is really important in alliance. And um, the task aspect of the assessment is, I need to know about you and what, you, what you're mm -hmm. experiencing and where you came from mm -hmm. so we can look at how you get stuck. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's really an important and foundational piece. That really is important. I like how you talk about the alliance because when couples first initiate treatment, there is sort of that fight I want to make sure that this therapist understands me, that yeah. they get it, right? And so when we spend a session with that's devoted entirely to them, we get the opportunity for them to feel like, yes, I totally get right. you. I had I my you. list. You heard my mm -hmm. list. I don't mm -hmm. have to fight every session to get you to hear mm -hmm. my list, you know? Mm -hmm. and, and then there's even more important things. Mm -hmm. Like their list is important, but also what makes that list important, mm -hmm. you know? And where they came from, and why is, why is this the mm -hmm. thing that they're fighting for from the attachment mm -hmm. framework? You know, what yeah. are we looking for? It really helps us, um, helps them start to appreciate where we're coming from too, which is, of course, where they're coming from, from this need for relational closeness. Mm -hmm. And um, they don't necessarily have kind of the language and the words around that. But as we're going through the assessment phase and building the alliance, this helping them start to come more from mm -hmm. the attachment perspective mm -hmm. so that they can start to feel that soothing and that kind of balm that the attachment mm -hmm. message brings into relationships. Mm -hmm. So it helps us get to work faster, you know. Yeah. I think in EFT, more times than not, slower is faster. Like yes. we get to the end result yes. quicker if we really lay good foundations, right. and an alliance is a really important part of that, and mm -hmm. th those initial assessments, mm -hmm. sessions, mm -hmm. really help to form that alliance. And I like how you said slow is fast in EFT, because when you just move fast too quickly, you miss a whole lot. So when you go really slow, you have the opportunity for more to pour out, more stuff that you would get than if you were moving too fast. So in that way, you're able to gain more ground because you have so much more mm -hmm. that's coming out. Mm -hmm. And what it also sounds like you're saying, in the way that assessment with EFT will be a little bit different, obviously there's the standard stuff you wanna assess for, alcohol, you know, substance abuse, um, domestic violence, suicide history, um, you know, is there trauma? Their sexual relationship. Yes, yeah. yes. So you, you want to get the same stuff that you'll collect no matter what model you're practicing, but because we are EFT and attachment focused, we're also looking for certain attachment history. We want to know who they turn to, who are their attachment figures, how do they self-soothe, where do they go to for comfort. Yeah, yeah, those, um, because all of those other, um, what we would see as reactive behaviors, mm -hmm come out of having, not having secure places to go mm -hmm. that would build healthy functioning and mm -hmm. healthy dynamics. And so we're certainly assessing for those um, coping strategies mm -hmm. because that will also help us then get in touch with them and deeper into their inner world, which is um, gonna bear a lot of fruit mm -hmm. as we start to go forward into the process with them. Great. Now, you just released the EFT step-by-step, -step, and that has a whole video on assessment, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Yeah. So if they want to know more, if they want to get the EFT step-by-step -step program, where can they buy it? They can go right to my website, drrebeccajorgensen.com, and the step-by-step -step program is available. It's a great course that mm -hmm. overviews the process of therapy, mm -hmm. the particular interventions of therapy, and um, the really cool thing about it is that there's four different therapists and six different couples. So you mm -hmm. get to see a variety of couples across the steps and stages. So um, it's a great learning resource. Excellent. So we're gonna put the link to Dr. Rebecca Jorgensen's website in the description for this video. And of course, make sure that you guys check out the Try EFT website and the ISF website if you guys are interested in learning more about various trainings in your area and attending a workshop or a training hosted by the fabulous and wonderful Dr. Rebecca Jorgensen. 
Thank you again so much for being part of our series and for being such a wonderful contribution and a huge presence in our community. So thank you so much. Thanks a lot. And thank you to all of our viewers. Thank you for all of your contributions and for watching. Make sure that you hit subscribe to the We Heart Therapy channel and stay tuned. More videos are on the way. Mm -hmm.